The clergyman's dog, French fairy tale. Listen to an interesting story that happened in a village near Rheims. There was an old church in this village in which an equally old curate, that is a priest, led the service. He had no assistance except for the one who was boundlessly devoted to him. Also, an old clergyman, clergyman, even though he was already old, managed everything. He was a bell ringer, a watchman, a grave digger, and a chorister, and he also helped the curate in the household because he had no hirelings. And where would he get it from if the curate's parish was poultry and the parishioners were poor? That's not the point, but the curate and the clergyman lived quietly without complaining about their fate. The day has passed and it's good, because what is there to be happy about. Although, to tell the truth, there was a great comfort in clergyman's life, his beloved dog. Can he be blamed for this weakness? Of course not. Besides, this dog was the best in the world. The dog obeyed the master in everything. The dog woke up at dawn so that clergyman would have time to ring the bell before matinee, kept watch at night, barked at all the beggars and passers-by, and happily wagged his tail. Moreover, sometimes the dog ran to the forest and brought wildfowl to its master and therefore to the priest. Curate and the clergyman were delighted with this amazing dog. Once a dog brought home a huge hare. Clergyman and the curate made a wonderful stew. They sat down at the table and started to eat it. However, they didn't forget about the dog either. They threw him a brain bone he grabbed the bone and choked with it, choked and immediately died. The clergyman cried out of grief. He tore his hair, banged his head against the wall. But what could he do? A dead dog was laying by the threshold. The clergyman lamented and consoled and thought to himself. The soul of his dog went straight to dog paradise, not otherwise. Paradise is paradise, but the body must be buried. Where to bury him? After all, it was not an ordinary dog, but the best of all. Oh, Mr. Curate, sighed the clergyman. I don't want to part with my dog forever. You are right, said the curate. The dog was faithful. Let's think of something. They thought, thought, and finally came up with an idea. And you know what? You never guess. They decided to bury the dog in that corner of the cemetery where the farmer grew cabbage and celery. That's how the clergyman's dog took the place of honor in the cemetery. Some time passed and news of the unique funeral reached the bishop's ears. The bishop was indignant. How come? Bury a worthless dog next to people? This is a sacrilege. Send for this blasphemer. 
the bishop was a man of authority and zealously monitored the behavior of his students and assistants. And he had no imperfections, except for one, who was terribly greedy. The bishop's messenger rushed to the poor curate and ordered, You should without fail come to the bishop in the morning. Mm, don't you know what I did wrong? asked the curate and turned pale with fright. I don't know for sure, replied the messenger. They say you buried the dog in the holy place where only people are buried. Oh, to me, indeed, indeed. The curate was horrified. The messenger left, and only then did the curate realize what he had done. Poor me, he exclaimed, the bishop can throw me in prison. All day long the curate prayed, repented, cried. Meanwhile the clergyman was calmly digging in the cemetery garden near the dog's grave. Suddenly, what a surprise! Like the wind, the clergyman flew into the curate's room without even knocking. Mr. Curate! Mr. Curate! he cried and handed to the curate an old mold-covered box that he had just dug out of the cabbage garden. Look, Mr. Curate! Look what I found on the ground! Well, what else is there? asked the curate reluctantly. He opened the box and sat down on the chair. It was full of gold acres. Forgetting for a moment all his misfortunes and sins, the old curate smiled and even closed his eyes in bliss. But he heard the voice of the clergyman. Mr. Curate, all this gold belongs to you. No, no, the curate finally opened his eyes. They are yours. You found them, not me. If so, then I will give them to you. No, my friend, they are yours. Why do I need them? Think for yourself. Okay, let's divide them equally. They divided the gold equally. And then the curate divided the coins into two more piles. He put one in the cupboard and put the other into a bag. The next day, before dawn, he went to the city. The bishop was already waiting for the curate, and without even inviting him to sit down, pounced on the poor man. He scolded him so much that the curate understood. He was very guilty, and he will have to spend his life in prison. However, our curate didn't forget about the vulnerable spot of the bishop, his greed. And so he humbly said, Mr. Bishop, I am guilty. I have done a terrible thing, but, but forgive me, a sinner. After all, this dog was the best among dogs. And I believed that there would be no great sin if I buried him in the holy ground. Oh, Mr. Bishop, if you knew him, you would definitely love him and say, no, you cannot hide this dog anywhere. Why is that? 
the bishop was surprised. Because the dog made a will before his death. What a nonsense! The bishop got angry again. This is not a nonsense, Mr. Bishop, but the sincere truth. Make up your own mind. He bequeathed you 100 gold eight years. Here they are. And the curate poured out a hundred shiny golden acres from the back. Hmm, the bishop said thoughtfully. Then turning to the curate, he graciously said, I guess you're right. It was such a smart dog. Well, let him lie where he is buried. This is how an amazing story of the dog who bequeathed the bishop 100 gold acres ended. To tell the truth, I was also looking for such a dog, but I never found one.